right, here we are, guys. Exercise three, still in Flash, hopefully. Uh, what we're going to be doing in this is we're going to be using a motion path to move an object. Uh, main objective of this exercise is to show you a simple way to move an object through space. It is also to show you that you can use other objects, things, artwork that you've either drawn in Illustrator, Photoshop, or things that you found on the internet in your animation here. So, just as we've done with the other ones, we're going to start off with Action Script 3. Set us up with our stage, uh, our timeline, all this other stuff. Uh, before we can move an object, we need to find an object though. So, again, if you have an image that's already saved, you got maybe like a picture of a car or a bunny rabbit, whatever, go ahead and use that. If you'd rather go on to the internet and look for something, that's fine too. Uh, Yep, I'm going to look for a scorpion, not the TV show. All right, I'm going to take this critter right here. I'm going to copy the image. All right, if you're not on Chrome, you're not going to be able to copy the image. If you're on Explorer or something like that, you might have to save the image and then import the image. Uh, but I've got the image copied here, and I am going to paste my image. Actually, before I paste my image, I am going to rename my layer. Scorpion. Alright, and the reason that I named this layer, we're going to use multiple layers for this exercise, so we want to be able to keep track of what we're doing with each layer. So I'm going to jump over to my keyframe here, and now I'm going to paste. Alright, that's an awfully big scorpion, probably way bigger than what we want. I'm going to shrink them down. I want them to be maybe like an inch tall. Alright, I'm going to drop them over here, right hand side of my screen. Alright. I'm going to start him off screen, but he's going to scuttle around my screen, he's going to go all over the place, and I'm going to have him exit over on the left hand side of the screen. Uh, in order to do that though, I am going to make a path for him to follow, and I'm literally going to just draw it, it's that simple. But I need to do it on a separate layer. So down here, bottom left corner, it says new layer right here, it looks like a post-it note with the corner peeled up. I'm going to click on that, and there you go, you got your other layer double click, let's rename it, let's call it path. This is going to be the path that our scorpion follows, or object in your case. Now on this layer, I'm going to use the pencil tool, like I said, very simply to draw the path. Uh, by default, we don't have a fill, we just have a stroke. If you want to change the color, be my guest. I'm going to stick to black. Uh, for me, this is just going to be more function than form. Another thing that you want to check on, you want to make sure uh, your pencil mode is the right mode. What mode we're going to use is smooth. If you use straighten, it's going to keep things kind of blocky. It's going to keep things very similar to uh, what your mouse does. Ink, it's going to give you different widenesses, different effects, whatever. We, we don't care about that. We just want to make sure that it's nice and smooth uh, so it'll give our, our object a nice fluid you know, flow around the uh, stage. So once I got that all set, I want to make sure, again, I'm still on the path layer. I can start to draw the path that I want my scorpion to follow. Now you can make this line as long or as short as you want. The thing to know is that for this exercise, we are going to do 80 frames. Uh, and the amount of space that is traveled in 80 frames uh, will look like it, it's covering uh, a lot of amount of space fast if you draw a long line, or it will look like it is moving very slowly in a short amount of space with a short line. So this is kind of a, a long line. Um, the reason that I made it these scribbles kind of in this area, I want the scorpion to kind of like hang out in these areas for a little bit longer. Uh, if you wanted to do something like draw loop-de-loops or corkscrews across your page, you can do that. Um, it might vary depending on what your object is and what you want it to do, where you want it to go, how long you want it to stay there. Um, do you want it to spin when it gets there? Do you want it to <laughs> freak out when it gets there? So on and so forth. So, uh, you don't have to copy these exactly. You can. You can do something totally different. You could just kind of scribble all like it doesn't matter to me as long as you're starting on one side of the stage and you're going to end up off the other side of the stage. Uh, from here, though, we're ready to move on. I want to go back to my scorpion 
and I want to make sure that it is a movie clip before I do anything else to it. So I'm going to right click on this guy, control click for Mac people, convert to symbol F8, make sure that it is a movie clip, go ahead and name it. I'm going to hit OK. All right, now I know this guy is a symbol, we're good to go. I'm going to now click on my path layer. I'm going to right click, control click again for Mac people. And we're going to make sure that this is defined as a guide. You will see down here where this looks like a piece of paper post-it note right now, the icon is going to change. It's going to look something more like a uh, like a pickaxe or a protractor or something like that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click guide. And there you go. There's the icon that we were looking for. All right, at this point, we can jump down to our timeline. I'm going to jump down 80 frames. Click on the top layer and click and hold and drag down. So I highlight both layers down here. I'm going to now insert a keyframe. So again, whenever we insert a keyframe, it's going to copy whatever we have all the way through all the in-betweens here and drop it also in this next keyframe. I'm now going to go down to my starting keyframe. Or actually, before I do that, uh, we're going to go down to my layer. What I want to do is I want to make sure that this layer is connected to this path. So in order to do that, I'm going to click and hold on the layer. I'm going to move upwards. Do you see this black line that has appeared? And it's got like a little white circle here at the end. That's what I'm looking for. I want that object to appear. Whenever I see that, I can let go. And you will see that the icon, this pickaxe icon right here, it's going to uh, change into something else. I'm going to let it go. All right, and now we can see that the uh, the pickaxe icon here, it looks almost like a catapulted ball, something like that. Next thing we need to do is here on the tween uh, frames of the object. So we want to turn that into a classic tween. All right, then again, we're going to go back to the start keyframe. We want to attach this scorpion to this line, okay, which, see that little circle in the middle that appears? Um, it actually looks like it attached for me. Make sure that it's attached. I'm going to jump to my last keyframe down here. I want to take my scorpion and I'm going to attach it to the other end. So I'm going to try to get that circle here in the center. See how it kind of like snaps to the end of that line? All right, I'm going to attach it and we should be good to go. There we go. Scorpion. So you see how fast he goes. It's because I drew a really long line. Now, if you wanted to have this path exactly, you wanted to take more time, you could obviously jump way further down on the timeline. Um, if you only have this amount of time allotted to having an object travel, then you're going to want to just draw a shorter path. All right. If you have any questions, comments, let me know. Go ahead and pause the video if you need to do that. Uh, otherwise, if you're all finished, raise your hand, show it to me, and then you can move on to the next one.